standardized on the other here. So, uh, to start with, uh, I just want to describe myself because I think nobody will know me except somebody else. I mean, just one or two Because um, I'm, I'm actually, uh, you know, uh, one of the uh, you know, uh, teams like, like leadership in Tokyo, Tokyo based Hongya community. And because, you know, Adobe, Adobe is very good about you know, making Hongya products, but we need more. More, more and more documents, as somebody said, or we need much more, you know, support to Pongya as a, if we use, if we need to create an enterprise-ready application. So that's what we are doing in Tokyo. So we are actually a, you know, a software development company, uh, and, and we have been developing using Pongya for more than four years for now. And and our our you know uh, work is like a very very major. Uh, application uh, and uh, that the Japanese is using, and we also write many uh, books about Tokyo for writing uh, articles. And the first book about actually, you know, published about Tokyo is actually the book that we we've been, you know, written about, uh, which, which was like 2011. So it was actually the world's first Tokyo book, but actually published in Japan. So that's why there are actually a couple, of, uh, you know, quite not much of Tokyo uh, developer community. Tokyo. That's why uh, we are trying to you know, uh, promote them, uh, tell them uh, what is the best practice to use Fongya. So today, uh, I would like to describe about the debugging of Fongya because I think this is something very, very you know, important to understand. So I just want to know how many of you here you know, have ever used Fongya or is using Fongya? Oh, how about that? I didn't think so. I mean, and how many? How many of you actually is suffering in Fongya of debugging? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, it does the same, same thing for me. I mean, uh, when the Android and iOS version of Fongya was ready, uh, it was actually cool, very cool, because it's cross-platform, and one source code uh, runs anywhere. But besides that, you know, we, we, we actually don't know what, what the... What, so when it comes to debugging cars, it's not like a cross-platform, and it is very hard to debug on each device or each platform. So I would like today to, uh, for my agenda today, is to describe about the current, what kind of debugging options are available, and also what kind of debugging tools are provided, and also uh, what's coming next, what's coming next, like um, like live reloading and others. So. So, so first of all, I just want to you know confirm that debugging is not like a testing. So I don't want to cover testing about testing today. This, this is something other topic and it's worth describing for many, many, many hours. So I just focus on debugging today. So if you want to know about A-B testing or how to do J unit or how to you do automated testing, uh, maybe that may be some, some other topic, maybe I can describe. But today I would like to talk about debugging. So for debugging a Hongya, you know, uh, I think there are three big, you know, uh, things that needs to be, you know, uh, solved, and those are the pitfalls. So one is that uh, I think most of people here is using PC browser like a Google Chrome or Safari to build their application. But when it comes to, you know, compile and and pack it as a Hongya application, it, it necessarily doesn't work, right? And it is vice versa. If you use Hongya APIs. Or if you use, if you have to build on your plugin and use that API, it doesn't work on PC browser either. So this is something you know uh, we need to understand. And the second thing is the so is it really a cross-platform development? I mean, so the true cross-platform development means one source code runs to all other devices at the same time. But when it comes to you know development and debugging, we actually targeting in each platform back and forth, right? And this is something needs to be improved. And the third thing is that, so, you know, uh, when you uh, have debugging capabilities just a little bit, well, for now, I want to describe it, it's improved much better, but previous versions of good views or even good views have very, you know, less uh, debugging capability. So, so you want to use something like a Chrome Dev tool. So today's topic is all about this. So uh, 
this is the, you know, uh, the summary of what I want to share today. So there are quite many of uh, debugging solutions available that you can use with Fongia. And, oh yeah, very, very important thing I forgot. Uh, very early, you are up here, so you can actually, you know, access to here afterwards, and I will actually post this here also. I think you don't need to take it off. Yeah. Um, it's already there. So, uh, so it is like, a, you know, uh, normal phone gap, but you can use many other tools. Like, uh, I will, say, I will uh, discuss about like, binary or JSON hyperbole, but there are many tools available for it. And we also have Safari remote debug and Chrome remote debug, so we will describe them as well. So, because I cannot say that there's, you, you just need one solution, because every tool set has, you know, uh, different support set and different, you know, purposes. So, so we, and you can actually combine together, right? Uh, if you want to develop an iOS application, you will use Safari Remote Debug, but you may use like binary or something with a binary uh, for quicker debugging. So, so it's about you know something uh, that you need to understand is that you need to combine everything together. Uh, that's something that we are doing as well. So, first of all, this is very important. Console log. So, well, this is, I, I think I think this is very very basic, but we need to understand about this. So, console log is available, but not as you know, uh, not, not as you know uh, performant as uh, like a PC browser, because there's nothing like a uh, object dump, or there's nothing like console log trace or you know other all other uh, console functions. There's only console log info, uh, warn. Error in debug, but everything is actually outputted as debug level, so it doesn't mean anything actually. But uh, so there are you know, a couple of uh, console commands available, and those are actually uh, logged to logcat if you're using Android, or in this log it's fair if you're using iOS. So this is the very, very basic, and this, this is something uh, is very helpful if you cannot use either any other solution. And you know the behind this, uh, you can actually go beyond console log to capture like a JavaScript execution. Uh, this is actually a private API to use iOS, so it's not a good idea to publish this at the App Store. But if you want, but in some case, if you want um, an iOS web view to to capture the JavaScript executions, this is the way to do. And today's topic is more about advanced debugging options. So, so first of all, I would like to uh, describe about binary. So binary is a remote debugger. Um, you can either install it from Node.js uh, Node as the NPM module, or you can use, actually Adobe is hosting uh, cloud-based binary server. So you can, of course, use that version as well. Uh, but, uh, uh, but you need to aware that um, the cloud version is actually using HTTP connection, so there's no security. So if you want to secure your debugging environment, uh, I suggest you to use um, the NPM repository or some, some other provider providing SSL version of memory. Anyway, um, this, is the, uh, this is the debug of phonegap.com. Uh, this is very simple. Uh, there's only three steps to use this, this thing. So step one, you enter whatever you like to take. Uh, so that's the, the something here. And then, step two, uh, it, will, it will provide you a link where you embed, embed this into your index of HTML. And, and, and actually, and that's it. You, you, when you run that software, um, embed it, and if, after you inject this script, uh, you will see a developer playing to here. I think, I think because if there is no client connected yet, so it's totally blank, but when the client is connected here, uh, you will see a domain inspector or something like that. I will describe this later uh, with handle in the demo. So I will continue now. So now I would like to describe about Safari Remote Inspector. This is way more, uh, you know, way more better than using binary because uh, binary cannot can do uh, like domain inspections or a little bit of like a uh, like networking activity or like a console.log support. But Safari remote 
inspector does far more than the like uh, like you can do the JavaScript debugging like adding breakpoints or like step in step out features or you even can do like a, like changing the all the like changing the local storage values or something like that and this is very unique um, so from here I would like to demonstrate a little bit about this so what I will do. I will execute a sample application in an emulator. Yeah. 
talking um, total relative buffers. And I would like to um, uh, describe, uh, describe one more than this, uh, which is live reloading and multi-device uh, debugging. So this is actually a very, very ongoing project. And it's called App Harness. Uh, this is actually a Cordova project. And uh, the guy in Google is actually trying to create this program. And it will be really very, very, you know, in timely manner. I don't know when it is, but maybe second or third quarter of this year. So the good thing is that it allows uh, live reloading. So the difficulty of Comcast application, one more thing, is that when you, when you finish up coding, you need to compile every time and install on your device and see whether that is running or not. But if you use a harness, uh, you just write your code, and you, when you save it, it automatically transfer to the device, and the drive, then the device automatically refreshes it. And I actually can uh, do a very, very, you know, uh, a you know, very, very easy, uh, I just want to describe uh, very, very quickly about how it looks like. Uh, I think it, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't work well uh, when, when I try to do this. So I open up uh, the harness. When I execute this, you will see something like this. So this is the Cordova harness main window. What it, what it does is that it, it actually runs together with Cordova command. So here, this is my uh, Cordova uh, you know, project. I, I put that in Cordova serve. So Cordova serve command makes Cordova, you know, up your application as a server. So it says that it's running on 8,000. Um, so what we can do, we actually type in this. Add application and it has been local of 8000. And when you add this, it should automatically add, you know, connects to this code of application and starts this application. But unfortunately, somehow it doesn't work at this moment, so I'm hoping them to fix it. But yeah, this is the, you know, I think you get the idea how it works. So, so I think when, when, when it's ready, I think this is very, very strong tool for developing code of applications. I very hope uh, these guys are you know, trying hard to you know, finish up everything of this. And there's actually one more thing I would like to describe. So this is actually a very, very you know, advanced uh, debugging tool called a harness. And um, one more thing that is that uh, actually we also created this kind of tool. So I just want to describe this for purpose of how like building is very helpful. So, I want to describe using my tool, uh, a tool we developed. So this is called Monitor Debugger. So this is exactly like our harness, but we have been doing this for actually quite many years for now. So the thing is that
users. And actually, you know, uh, this is the end of my slide. But uh, one more thing I want to describe. Um, I think I think most, some of you already know about Topco project. Uh, this is a shared framework. Uh, so uh, in addition to the debugging, I think the creating of the user interface is very very important. That's why um, Topco is very good at you know uh, rendering everything because this is only a CSS framework. And we actually are using this CSS framework to create a uh, you know, very, very high quality application for Japanese com customer. And that's why um, we, we, have been, uh, create, we, we have been collaborating with uh, Topo team to create a uh, very, very uh, advanced UI framework called Ponzi UI. So I hope if you, if you like this, uh, if you like uh, Topo and if you are interested in you know, creating beautiful user interface, Please consider about uh, you know trying to consider it right? because this is the uh, web component is uh, Angular JS uh, component. So everything of the component is written as a tag, like most important tag or you know on space tag or everything is tag. And you can do like um, there are many widgets, uh, including iOS and Android theme. And we also provide like a split view, like you kind of like need to be for the mobile development. So maybe you can. Uh, you're very happy with it. And something very important for a okay, developer, uh, there's something like on speed platform Android. So if you use this, uh, you can only display things if you are running on Android and if you're on iOS, you can use uh, on speed iOS, iOS. So these are the concepts of, the, I think, the uh, future development. So combined with the uh, like apparent or the, uh, the library of <coughs> capable debugging tool, plus both uh, Chrome or the Safari remote debugging tool, plus the user, user interface libraries, I think Pongya has much, much better development experience than ever, uh, which I think is very competitive and which something uh, already Japanese customers are very happy with it. So today, this is my demonstration is over, but if there are any other questions, uh, I'm very happy to answer it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.